Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Leif Erikson on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here's our distinguished host, Edward Arnold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, our true story is transcribed from the life of Leif Erikson. To most of us, that name has a familiar ring. We recall it from our history books somewhere in the vague past. However, few of us realize that Leif Erikson discovered America more than a thousand years ago, almost 500 years before Columbus. Tonight, we are going to tell you the true adventures behind that remarkable expedition and the little known story of what happened to it. Now, here is Frank Goss. Here's a timely reminder. Is someone you know having a birthday this coming week? If there is, and you'd like to make a happy day even happier, then send a Hallmark card. At the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards, you'll find the widest selection of new birthday cards. And you'll find one that just seems made to order for the person you have in mind, whether it's a child, a relative, or a close friend. And the card you send carries an added compliment, for it has the Hallmark and crown on the back, the symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. And now, Edward Arnold brings you the Hallmark Hall of Fame. One thousand years ago in Norway, there lived a king known as Harald, the fair-haired. He was a man of strong personal ambition and he ruled his fellow Norsemen in a ruthless manner. Many of them rebelled against his tyranny. Some of these Vikings left Norway, sailing westward in small, square-sailed ships without compass, guided only by the sun and the stars. One such expedition arrived on the shores of America, and it's this incident with which we are concerned at this beginning of the new year. The discovery of America by Leif Erikson, the Vikings were forced ashore at what we now know as Martha's Vineyard. Northrend, that loose oar, get it before it falls away. I have it, Leif. Feeney, the women, see that their lashings are secure. Quickly, quickly. They are secure, Leif, but perhaps they should be loosened. I hear waves breaking on rocks. We may be blown onto them. We cannot leave the women tied to the ship. Hold your tongue, Feeney. We cannot untie them until we're certain. Keep the lashings secure. Leif, rocks. I saw them. Look over there. If the wind is favoring us, Baldur, stay on that oar. Huh? We need everything we can muster to stay to the wind. Please, don't leave my wife tied there. If you don't let it go, I'll... Stay at your post, Thorfinn, or take the consequences. Silence! All of you, silence! You quickly here, to the tiller, quickly. I have it, please. Baldur, Baldur, you too. Aye. We need all the strength on the tiller. Baldur, quickly, Aye. we're coming closer. Keep her steady. Thorfinn, untie the women. I leave. Tell them each to hold on to the rope. Closer. We're closer. Let us handle the killer. You look after the women. Hold the end of the rope. Tell each of them to hold the end of the rope with one of the cats so you can stay afloat. The gulf is floating! Everything we could find, Leif. I'm afraid the sea claimed most of our goods. That was to be expected, Balder. Did you send the men out into the woods as I ordered? They've been gone some while. Were any of the weapons lost in the wreck? No, Leif. The men had lashed them to their waists. We have all our axes and swords. Good. I instructed Thorfinn to look after the women. His wife was pretty badly hurt on the rocks. Yes. It's 
hard to believe the hellishness of last night as you look around this peaceful, sunlit bay now. Hard indeed, Leaf. But then the sea always has been full of tricks for us, has it not? In degrees, yes. Last night was one trick we could have done without. Yes. Well, I have Staney preparing the wood for a fire. I must go see to it. A balder. Yes? If it had not been for you at the helm, none of us would be alive. Balder the strong. Ready, Leaf? Yes, Thorfinn. Are you members of the council present? And waiting. This is what, the, the fourth meeting? Fifth. Oh, yes, the fifth. Time has gone quickly since we came ashore. As time does when one is busy. Well, let's let's get to it then. Thorfinn. Yes, Leaf. If we ever get back to Iceland, we will have much to tell. Of the council? I think they would be glad to hear that we followed the procedures of the Althing, that men should govern themselves. <laughs> yes, that. But I was thinking of this beautiful land where we find food and shelter so easily. Yeah, I'm afraid no one in Reykjavik would ever believe us. You'll find the council has encouraging things to say. The fifth meeting of our council is now in session. Thorfinn? Yes, Lee? Who is the first to speak? Jon. Jon? Yes, Lee? You've been in charge of building the cabins. I have nothing to speak of, Leaf, except results. The three cabins are almost completed, and we are ready for the snows. Were you not to build a palisade around the cabins? I have talked to other members of the council, and some say they think it unnecessary. But we agreed in council to build a palisade. Leaf. Yes, Danny. We feel it's a waste of time and men. Leaf. Yes, Magnus? I have something to say that has been worrying many members of the council. Yes? A ship. Vikings must never be without a ship. Maybe the natives here will prove hostile. We never know. We must have a ship. Thorfinn, call the roll. Those in favor of building a ship, answer aye. Those opposed, nay. Steady? Aye. Jon? Aye. Magnus? Aye. Balder? Nay. I'll say you, Thorfinn. Nay. I answer, aye. The council has come to a close. Uh, Thorfinn. Yes, Leif? Why did you vote nay? I want to have no excuse to leave this beautiful land. Excuse? Well, what do you mean? Lilia. Your wife? Lilia is going to have a baby. Much left, Lee. The craft is nearly ready. And a sound one she is. What about the oars, sir? Uh... Well, since they need to be of very dry wood, Thorfinn has been felling trees and laying them in the sun. Oh, good. They shouldn't need to dry too long, even in this cold. Aye. Now we are ready for the snows. Yes, just in time, too. We're lucky. I've been worried about Magnus. Magnus? Have you watched him? No. Why? Look at him. The way he swings the axe. What? He doesn't look right. His face, hot, red. Yeah. He seems to be weaving on his feet. Let's go see what is the matter. Magnus. Uh, yes? What's the matter? Are you ill? Ill? Maybe, maybe you'd better... Ill me... He'll know I'm not. Uh... Magnus. What can it be, Bonder? Magnus has always been as strong as an animal. He's sick, Leaf. He's a very sick man. Maybe we'd better go and tend to. Leaf? Yes, Thorfinn. Alder Grimmer. 
Zaney, Maris, four more of them. All sick. Five men sick? Four. Magnus is dead. a moment, we'll bring you the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. At this point every year, right after hearing from so many friends over the holidays, don't you wish there was an easy way to keep in closer touch with these good friends throughout the year? So many of us are inclined to put off letter writing. Often, too, in our busy lives, there isn't time for long letters. Well, at the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards, you'll find the ideal solution. Boxes of attractive Hallmark decorated notepapers. These notepapers are both decorative and so convenient to keep on hand for all those occasions when you want to dash off a newsy note. Your friends will appreciate hearing from you more often. And these handsome Hallmark notepapers have a warm, personal air about them. Each one will seem like a little visit from you. You'll find many occasions to use these Hallmark notepapers, too. They're ideal for invitations or thank you notes, for instance. So get several boxes this week. You'll find many beautiful designs to choose from, including a lovely array of floral patterns. And you'll be surprised to find these distinctive notepapers are remarkably inexpensive. Only 59 cents, $1, or $2 a box. And each note you send will complement the receiver because it carries the hallmark and crown on the back. The symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. And now, Edward Arnold brings you the second act of our true story from the life of Leif Erikson. Winter had settled in on the east coast of America. The snow fell steadily on the cabins of the tiny colony of Norsemen. And as happened so often in the affairs of men at their height of happiness and joy, disaster had struck with suddenness and with no warning. The Vikings, adventurers that they were, had little understanding of sickness. But with the determination that had carried them across uncharted waters, halfway across the world, they faced each other in council to assess the disaster and to see what could be done. I know that deep sorrow rests in your hearts as I speak to you. None of us knows what happened to these men, what is wrong with them, what we can do to help them get well, except Magnus, who has already joined his gods. Leif? Yes, Balder? It must be a plague, Leif. It must be that, to have stricken them, the five of them, almost all at once. You likely are right, Balder. I think it is the plague. Thorfinn has something to say about plague. Say what you have to say, Thorfinn. What I have to say is most difficult, Leif, but it must be said. We have already taken the first step in putting them together in the big cabin. Yes. The rest of the colony must be kept away from them. We knew of plagues in Europe. We knew that those who were sick should be kept away. We must keep those who are well away from the sick. But who will tend them and care for them? We will discuss that in a moment, Balder. But first, I must reassign the tasks. Balder? Yes, Leif? You will take over Magnus's task. The ship? The ship. The men will all be at your command. Send half of them into the woods for timber each day and keep half of them with you at the seaside to assemble the timbers. I Leif. Thorfinn, your task will remain to find food for us. The women will continue to cook. And Thorfinn... Yes, Leif? Twice each day, you will bring a kettle of broth to the clearing by the big cabin. Leave the broth there. You must not come within 30 paces of the cabin. Leaf, those men can't get their broth from the clearing. They can't get off their bed. I know that, Balder. I will bring it to them. What? I'm going to live with them and care for them. Leaf, Grimmer. Leaf? Why, 
Why are you here? To look after you, Grimma. To take care of you and the others. Leif, you must not do this. You must not. Do not expose yourself to the plague, Leif. The colony needs you. Grimma, brave Grimma. Do you think we do not want to see you back to health? <sighs> the risks are too great. Too great for our leader. Shh, there, Grimmer. Let's not have any more talk. You need to rest. Where's Magnus Sleaf? Magnus? Magnus died, Grimmer. Oh, what a way. What a way for a Viking. Die on land, Leaf. To die on land, what is that? We're with the sea. Our lives are with the Grimmer, sea. Grimmer. Lie back and be easy. As easy as you can. The sea, sea, Leaf. I want to die at sea. Mike Grimmer, you must not speak these thoughts of dying. At sea. You know you must not think. Is. Is the ship ready, Leaf? No, Grimmer. The ship is not ready. Now, rest. <sighs> few paces. How many days is it, Thorfinn? Seven, Leif. Seven days. How are they? Worse. All of them. Much worse. Does it look like that? I don't know. I won't say, Thorfinn. One way or the other. There's still hope while they're alive. Yes. Is the work on the ship going well? As well as can be expected under the circumstances. How is Lilia? I'm keeping her in the cabin most of the time. She's fine. Worried about the baby coming. And the plague. Yes, I can see. Well, that's all I wanted to ask you, Thorfinn. Good luck to you. And to you too, Lee. And to our four men in there. They're the ones who need the luck of the gods now. Good night. Good night, Lee. You must not say that. We're dying. Leif. Yes. Dying, sure. Vikings dying on land. You must lie back and rest. Hmm? I, I will get you some of the broth. I want no broth. I need no broth. Leif. A promise, Grimmer. The funeral leaf. It must be a Viking funeral. We're dying on land. You, you must promise a Viking funeral. Grimmer, we have no ship. The test of the flames reef. To send our souls to Valhalla. A promise. A promise. Is that you, Balder? Yes, Thorfinn. Dark night. I couldn't see you. Leaf is placing the kindling against the cabin. How is he? Just about finished. Oh, here are the men. Leaf! Leaf! Go and give me the torch. I... Leaf! Give me the torch, Thorfinn. 
five of our strongest and ablest men lie dead in that cabin. I made a promise to the last one to die, to Grimmer, that they would be given the full honor of a Viking funeral, that the flames would carry their souls to their gods in Valhalla. With this torch, I had fulfilled that promise. They lived good Vikings. They died good Vikings. Come with me, Balder. I have something to talk with you about. I leave. Is the ship nearly ready? Nearly. It should be ready for the sea, but... By the time the snow has gone. Well, the weather has been breaking fast. The snow should be gone in a matter of days. Well? Yes, Leif. The ship will be ready. Good. Thank you, Balder. Good night. Good night. Lee? Huh? Yes, who is it? Thorfinn. I kept the news from you until your ordeal in the cabin was over. News? What news? My son was born last night. <laughs> you all to gather to hear of the plans adopted by your council. As you have seen, the loss of our ablest men has put the colony in danger. Your council has decided there's nothing to do but sail home for Iceland. The ship is ready. The weather is ready. Someday we may return in better fortune to what we have found in every way to be a land of bounty, a land of promise. Were we of sufficient number, there's no doubt we would remain here. But the sickness took care of that. Let us hope that in the future, Vikings will return to these shores to build their homes, to settle the land we found for them. We look forward to our voyage home with hope, as we always have in the past. The council has decided the journey should be dedicated to the child, born to Thorfinn and Lilia, the first-born Norseman on this land. Ended the saga of Leif Erikson and his colony in America 1,000 years ago. The child, son of Thorfinn, was in fact the first white child born in America. The adventure of the Vikings was a failure, and it remained for others centuries later to sail the seas to the land of promise. It is interesting to speculate at this beginning of the new year what this land of ours might be like in 1955 had it been settled by Leif Erikson 500 years before our own pilgrim fathers arrived. Now, here is Frank Goss. You know, earlier, we were talking about thoughtfulness and keeping in closer touch with friends and relatives throughout the year. We often have the best intentions, but we forget. And it's hard sometimes to keep track of the birthdays and anniversaries of our friends. Well, the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards have a gift for you. A gift that's waiting right now for you to pick it up. And it's a wonderful memory minder. It's a new 1955 Hallmark date book. This attractive little date book is designed to fit conveniently in purse or pocket. In the front pages, the Hallmark date book has spaces for the addresses and phone numbers of your friends and family. With special places, too, to list birthdays and anniversaries right on the same line with each name and address. And you'll find it a wonderful convenience to have both these addresses and dates right with you. Then the Hallmark date book gives you a day-by-day -day calendar with room to remind yourself of appointments, club meetings, or luncheon dates. You'll find other helpful information in your Hallmark date book. And remember, it's a gift to you from the fine stores that feature Hallmark cards. It's their way of saying thank you 
for remembering to look for cards with a hallmark and crown on the back. The symbol that you look for when you care enough to send the very best. Now, here is Edward Arnold. <laughs> uh, wouldn't old Samuel Johnson, the English writer, who advised everyone to keep your friendships in constant repair, be surprised if he could see one of those hallmark date books? <laughs> Realize how easy it is nowadays to follow his advice. With the help of a date book and hallmark cards, I'm sure he'd be one of the first in the store to ask for his free hallmark date book. Incidentally, I think you'll be interested to know Leif Erikson was portrayed tonight by Larry Thor, whose proper Icelandic name was Anlefur Loris Thorstensen. Larry is himself a descendant of Leif Erikson. Therefore, we not only called upon Larry to portray his ancestor, but to write our script. Thank you, Larry, for both the splendid performance and for a fine drama. This Sunday marks the beginning of another year on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And we thought this would be an appropriate time to tell you about the many exciting programs we have ahead for the coming season. For example, next week we will present a true story from the life of President Andrew Johnson. It's a little known story behind the only impeachment procedures ever instigated against the President of the United States. It'll be my pleasure to play President Johnson. The following week, we will bring you a true story from the life of one of America's greatest agricultural scientists, George Washington Carver. It involves one of the strangest congressional investigations in history, and it all centered about a plant developed by Mr. Carver, the lowly peanut. On January the 23rd, we will present the story of Charlemagne, who centuries ago created a united Europe. On January the 30th, we will be indeed honored to present a true story from the life of unquestionably the world's greatest living statesman, Sir Winston Churchill. With the Prime Minister's permission, we are going to dramatize a little known incident in his life that occurred during the Boer War. The story of an exciting and amazing escape made all the more remarkable because the man it happened to was Sir Winston Churchill. So we hope you will join us next Sunday and each Sunday during 1955. Until next week, when we present the true story of the attempted impeachment of President Andrew Johnson, this is Edward Arnold saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. The Hallmark Hall of Fame is produced and directed by William Prude. Heard in tonight's transcribed cast were Labont Johnson, Jack Moyles, Barney Phillips, John Stevenson, William Euler, and Tom Brown. Next Sunday, the Hallmark Hall of Fame on television will tell the little-known but exciting story of John Ho, America's first mint master. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you until next week at this same time when you'll hear a true story from the life of President Andrew Johnson starring Mr. Edward Arnold. The following week, a true story from the life of George Washington Carver on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network.